Designers, are you struggling to find graphic design gigs and clients? If so, then you may be interested to know that there are some things you can do to turn this around. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you five strategies that are going to help you land your next graphic design client. I'm Eric Vasquez, a key art and brand designer based in New York City, and this is Lennox Darnell Boisier Vasquez, one of my two coworkers. Whether you're just starting out as a graphic designer or if you're someone who's been doing freelance graphic design for a while, implementing these five strategies are going to exponentially increase your chances of getting your next design gig or client. I have personally tried all of these things out myself and have had enough success with them where I feel I can confidently share them with you today. So let's get into it. The first thing to consider when you're looking to get a new clients or a new gig is your portfolio updated and ready to share? Now, don't be out here sending links to your portfolio if the only work you have are projects that are seven to 10 years old. I've been on the other side of this where I've had people sending me their design portfolios. And sometimes I've even seen college projects a few years after somebody's been out of school. So at most, I would say you wanna show work that is within the last five years to keep it at least somewhat relevant. But you wanna make it very clear what type of work you do and who you wanna do it for. And by that, I mean making it very clear in your portfolio with your work. The reason I say this is because A, you wanna make it more clear for you and what you're offering. Now I'm not saying that you have to be like super niche down to the point where you feel like you're trapped and you can only do one type of work. Just make it easy to understand and make it digestible for someone who might be visiting your website for the first time. You also want to make sure that it's clear for a potential client because it's sort of like your calling card, right? The first time somebody comes to your site, are they going to be confused when they see a whole bunch of different types of work? No, you want to make them understand as quickly as possible. And the third reason you want to be super clear is because it will help any warm leads or referrals understand what you do so that they can tell other people. Once you have those things in place, let's dive a little bit deeper into what I mean by referrals. I can break this into two parts. The first part are your friends and family. It may seem super obvious, but you'd be surprised how often this one is kind of overlooked. If you're looking for a gig or if you're looking for projects, the first thing I would do is speak to my friends or family openly and freely. You can give them a call, you can email them, and just ask them, hey, are you, do you know anybody who's looking for any design work? So you'd be surprised because just by doing this, some of your friends and family might send your stuff or tell somebody about you without you even being there. And this is one of the strongest and most underutilized ways to actually get more gigs. The second part of the referrals approach is utilizing connections, colleagues, and people that you may have worked with. Now, I want to emphasize the fact that I'm talking about people that you've had good relationships with, right? So somebody that you would hang out with or have a drink with. I would start this out by creating a list of work friends or former colleagues that I could reach out to, send them a message or an email, and just let them know that I'm openly, you know, looking for work, that I'm trying to find gigs. If you're in a situation where maybe there's a person that you know, but you haven't talked to them in a long time and you might not feel comfortable just hitting them up out of the blue and asking them if they can refer you to somebody, I would start off by re-engaging with them and talking to them again. You would just sort of talk to a friend and say, you know, hey, like, what have you been up to? What's going on in your life? That can be another way to again, sort of rekindle that relationship. The next thing that you want to start doing is promoting yourself, marketing yourself and your work. I know this can be scary for a lot of designers, so I'm going to try to break it down for you and make it as easy as possible. Let's keep it simple. Start with one platform, whichever one you feel the most comfortable with. For me, I would say that it's probably LinkedIn. So what I would encourage you to do is to take any recent projects that you've done and share it talk about it on social media on that one platform basically you're doing this so that you can remind people you want to stay top of mind and let people know what type of work you do so when you're sharing your projects on this one platform make it clear what your role was in the project you know what you were responsible for maybe any key takeaways that you learned from doing the project this is a great way to try and build up your network and again, stay top of mind. So a way that I've personally done this recently is by posting consistently on YouTube and doing 30 days of YouTube shorts. 
Now, I was doing this not only to sort of re-engage the community and the people who are watching my channel, but also to create more awareness around what type of work I do with key art and with branding. While I was doing these shorts, I also happened to be putting some of my projects out there on LinkedIn. And somebody who saw my project on LinkedIn then went and watched a YouTube video, saw one of my in-depth logo process videos, and reached out to me about helping them with their branding. So this was a very organic way to start a conversation about having a project with a potentially new client. Let's talk about creative placement agencies. I'm always kind of amazed when I realize that there's a lot of designers out there who haven't utilized this incredibly valuable resource. Now, creative placement agencies helped me get my start when I first moved to New York City. These agencies are also really helpful and have been helpful for me anytime I've been let go or laid off, and I just needed to fill in some of those gaps in between opportunities. So depending on what type of work you wanna do, there may be different agencies that specialize. So be sure to look up some of these agencies and find the one that helps designers get placed in the industry that you wanna work in. Well, usually the way that it works is you'll either do a virtual or an in-person interview with the agency, and if they like you, they'll start shopping your stuff around right away. You can find out about a gig the very next day. That's how fast it happens. Some of the agencies that I've personally worked with over the years that I love are Creative Circle, Aquint, Artisan, Vitamin T, and Planet Technology, to name a few. So check these out because it can be a great way to get your next client. This is cold mail, but the last point that I wanna talk about is cold email. What do I mean by cold emailing? Well, let me explain. Cold emailing is reaching out to people who you might not know or who you may not have a relationship with yet. But really by doing this, you're no worse off than you were before and you've really got nothing to lose. I know it can be a little bit scary, so let me just explain how I would go about this. If I'm looking for a new client or a new design gig, I'm going to spend a little bit of time researching on LinkedIn or through Google to see who some of these people are that work at the companies that I'd like to work with. And I'll try to find emails or contact information, maybe for some of the art directors, senior designers, creative directors, people like that, that I can just start a conversation with. I'll try to set aside some time throughout the week where I'll send anywhere from five to 10 emails a day. And then over the course of five days, before you know it, you've sent like 50 emails out. This can be a little bit hit or miss, I'm not gonna lie. But let's say you send out 50 emails and you maybe hear back from three or four people. I mean, your chances are pretty good of maybe that turning into at least one or two projects. So it's really another great strategy to implement along with some of the other ones that we've covered today. Now, just to quickly recap everything that we've talked about in this video, when it comes to trying to get new gigs and clients, you want to start off by making sure that your portfolio is on point. After that, it's about the referrals, talking to your family, your friends, your work friends and former colleagues, and rekindling relationships and generating those natural, organic, warm leads. Start looking up some creative placement agencies. I've really tried to emphasize how helpful a resource this can be, especially if you're moving to a new city or if you're in between jobs. After that, it's about hopping onto just one social media platform, putting your work out there, promoting and marketing yourself. And lastly, don't forget those cold emails. I know that the cold emails can be scary, but you've really got nothing to lose. If you've enjoyed this video, I wanna encourage you to check out this video next, where I show you a little bit more about my journey so far as a graphic designer who went from working as an in-house designer for 15 years to starting my own business as a freelancer. All right, creative, thank you so much for watching. Keep designing, and we'll see you in the next one.